Hello fellow Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel. I'm very excited today because after years of searching, I've finally been able to get my hands on one of Citadel's most innovative and revolutionary products. A product that was way ahead of its time. A product that you probably didn't buy or even knew existed. I didn't buy it either. I miss it when they released it and regretted it ever since. Finally, after a very long search, I finally managed to get a complete set. It's the Citadel Artificer Tint Set. Oh, shrink wrap. Mm. Why don't you join me in this unboxing and review of a product you cannot buy anymore? Let's get cracking. Okay, let's open this up. I'm going to do the nerd thing about opening it with a scalpel very carefully to not damage the plastic. Not that it really matters at all for ourselves. Okay, this is all. So we have some stickers of different colors. I'm guessing this is for plotting how many spoonfuls or portions of tint we get into each paint. And here are the names of the thing. I think we should stick this in the pots, shouldn't we? Rogal Dawn. So this looks like a really thick, very concentrated version of Flask It's Yellow. This is Sanguinius, so we're going to stick that in. Again, same thing, very intense red. Probably these are all uh, single pigments, so that's a nice thing. Uh, which one is this? I think this must be Ferrus Manus. This one, I think so. It's the only one that matches. Very brownish color. This must be Lorgar, so this has to be our purple or maybe you want to call this dark magenta color very intense this looks like the pigment of the new sigval burgundy really really similar this must be well i think they want to say perturabo but it's clearly trademarked as perturbo so that's awesome it means that it's a faster version oh really thick this is showing its age this must be uh, the blue yeah very intense I don't know if this will translate properly to camera, but it's a really intense blue. This is going to be nice. Let me see if I can find the purple. This is the purple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very dark, intense purple hue with like petroleum kind of shine that this kind of tint used to have. I think this will be very similar to the pigment used in the old Citadel purple ink. Oh yeah, very intense dark green. I like this. This is going to be nice. This is Vulcan. Then we have the white and the black. So the white must be a brick. <laughs> oh my God, let's see. Oh yeah, this is very spongy. This is almost dry completely. It's all here in a big chunk. Classic GW white. And the last one is a black. And I can already see a blue-ish hue on this black. Oh, look at this. I just realized the names are inside of these of these um, packages. That's awesome. And we got three of these nice GWs uh, spreaders. I actually like this quite a lot. They are great tools. It's great to have three of them. So out of this set of 10, I think the most useful is going to be Lorgar for our purposes anyway. Uh, Conrad Curse, uh, Magnus the Red, Horus, and Vulcan. We can maybe use some of this as well, probably the red and the yellow. These others, uh, which are clearly single pigments, uh, this is some kind of oxide, this is some kind of uh, ochre, and this is just white. I don't think this will be as much of a use, but we will see. So why don't we test this? And for this, I'm going to use this mini that we're probably never going to paint otherwise. And I think it's a good subject. Why don't we start by one of the main advertised uses for these paints by Genshin Workshop, which is tinting metallics. But of course, we don't have to use GW metallics, have we? I have here metal color silver, best metallic paints in the world. And we're going to see if they work with these tints. I want to make sort of a turquoise color. So I have a Vulcan, which I'm going to add here. 
Oh, they are very, very, very thick, so they don't want to mix well, but it's going to take a little bit. Okay, it seems like this is working. Very difficult to mix in the pigments with this. So let me grab an old brush, see if I can do better. Oh yeah, much, much better for mixing. We already have a greenish hue there. Very nice, actually. Pretty beautiful. Subtle still, so I think we need more. Very clean brush, nice dollop. Okay, this looks really nice. I'm going to add some blue. We have Conrad Curse, nice dollop of this. Oh, and I can already see the change. This is way more intense than the green. Look at that beautiful color. Oh yeah. This is awesome. Why don't we try this on the armor? I'm so happy with this. Vallejo Metal Color are always a massive pleasure to use and with this tinting set, I think I have all I need to make, well, basically any shade that I want. So this is probably the most beautiful color metallic I've ever seen. It's stunning. I think we should try to paint this only using these colors and some medium. Why don't we try that? And for our shade, I'm just going to use contrast medium. So we're going to make a shade. And I'm going to use this Conrad Curse Blue. Oh no, I'm going to use my brush because I now know that works better. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that blue. Very nice. A bit more medium. This blue is very powerful. I think I'm going to add a touch of green into this. Just very little. So we're going to take Balkan and add a small touch of this. And I think I'm going to add a touch of black to make it a bit darker. So we're going to take some Horus. Horus? Hmm, let me do a test. Let me see what will happen if instead of using Horus, I use Magnus the Red, which is purple. Oh, this is a very nice, intense, dark blue. Yeah, I think I like this more, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to prepare another bit of medium there, and I'm going to make a lower intensity. There you go. So we have a more of a wash, and I'm going to test this wash and see how it goes. So I redid the highlights with the same metallic mix. I still had a little bit left and this looks amazing. I'm really surprised and happy how this, how awesome this looks. And now we're going to mix a highlight color, but for this, we are going to take white aluminum, the brightest and most uh, highlighty of all of the metal color paints. And we are going to add a little bit of green, just green. I want to shift the highlights towards green. That is going to be awesome. Just that, a little bit.
the armor is looking amazing and I still have to paint a lot of details but I think I'm going to concentrate in these scaly parts and for this you know what I think I want a metallic purple so what are we going to do go back to our metal color silver and use a little bit of Magnus the Red <laughs> I wanted more purple. Ooh, oh, this is now looking proper. Look at that. Ooh, this is beautiful. This combination of metal color and this tints is amazing. I base coated all of the trim using a mix of Retributor and uh, Vallejo Modeler Silver, my favorite mix for this kind of light gold. And then going to make a wash. Start again with our trusty contrast medium. There you go, Magnus the Red. Going to take a little bit of this black now. Oh yeah, much better. And then going to apply this wash over our trim and our purple detail. Essentially, we just made a kind of shy purple looking paint. I really like how purple looks over gold. I also did some tests um, on treating them like contrast paints. This is Lorgar uh, mixed with contrast medium. So somehow I lost the footage, so sorry about that, but they behave really, really well. Look at that smoothness, it's just perfect. And I did just a little bit of Lorgar and a little bit of Ferrous Manus, I think. And, but now I want to see how they behave as modifiers for contrast paints. So I'm going to use Gilliman Flesh and tint it a little bit more pinkish, more otherworldly, more demony looking. I'm going to take a little bit of Lorgar, this burgundy kind of color, just a teeny tiny bit. Oh yay, that looks awesome. Just what I wanted, a pinkier, uh, more demony looking flesh tone. So let's try this over the flesh here. This is awesome. The combination of conscious paints and this tints just gives us so much opportunity such a shame that the range was so limited to begin with. Look at that, it looks amazing. Oh, I could maybe even finish this mini and everything. Let's now see if I can modify a green. For example, this, I just picked this randomly. I wasn't actually looking for any particular green. For the doing some light green, some yellowy green feathers. And I'm going to try and see what happens if I add a little bit of Rogaldon into this. I think a little bit more. This clearly turned it a little bit opaque, so I'm going to add a little bit of medium. go. Very nice. Let's see how this looks. Oh yeah, so good. Look at that. That looks amazing. Looks a little bit like some of the new like striking scorpions green or something like that. So no doubt that we have some of this pure pigments mixed in into the new range of contrast. Look at this, beautiful. So good. I'm really happy. Yes, you can probably just buy the paint that looks pretty much like this or, or whatever, but isn't it fun to just play? So I painted this sword with some silver metallic 
because you want to make a small test. I have the suspicion that this, I want to call them paints, but they're not really paints. This tint don't really ever dry. I think this will reactivate forever. So I think we can take advantage of this to create some really nice blending. Let's see if it works. I'm going to make a bluish kind of thing. And I'm going to pick a little bit of this Conrad curse and then some Horus to create a darker hue. Okay, I think I'm happy with this super dark blue. Looks like a, pr uh, like a Prussian blue, something like this. Really cool. I think I'm going to apply this uh, here. I'm going to apply a shadow in this section. Another one on this section. All this intense. And another one on this section. I think I'm going to leave this to dry and see what happens. So it's been a fair number of minutes. And if this isn't dry by now, it's probably never going to be dry. So I'm going to try and see if this blends. And yeah, as I suspected, these tints don't really solidify into a, a permanent solution because, well, they aren't really paints. They are reactivatable. Look at that beautiful blend with no coverage. It's like working with oils, but without the hassle of oils. It's really interesting. You will probably have to varnish this. You will probably know. You will have to varnish this afterwards, obviously, because this is not going to be a stable, maybe in a very, very long time, but not in a short period, that's for sure. I've been playing more and more with oils lately, and this is just like painting with oils, but without having to get out chemicals and stuff like that. Very convenient. That makes me wonder. Oh, a thought just popped into my head. Will this be a good substitution for white oil in my EC Plasma? I think it will. So I think a very interesting showcase of what these paints can do. If you ask me, these five are my favorites because they are very, very transparent uh, and they will work as contrast paints because I actually believe these are some of the pigments used in the contrast paints. We have Lorgar, Vulcan, Conrad Curse, Horus, and Magnus the Red. These other five, I see them more uh, as actual modifiers for acrylic paints, also for contrast paints, of course, uh, but not as useful as the other five. Still good to have, uh, still a nice tool, but just not as good. But we can do some very interesting stuff with the yellows to modify and give some intensity to some contrast paint. So really nice. Can you imagine if this product came out today? It would be one of Tidal's most successful products. Imagine being able to make your own contrast paints or express color, custom-made hues designed for your needs. It's massive. You cannot get this kind of tint or dyes easily. This type of product is usually not available to normal consumers, and yet Citadel produced it. Of course, uh, contrast paints weren't a thing at the time, and that probably made a difference. No one really understood it. GW themselves didn't promote it properly, and it just disappeared. I'm lucky enough to have found three full sets that I'm going to treasure greatly, but it's sad to know that at some point I would just run out, and that, well, that will be the end of it. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below and in the pinned comment of this video. 
share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. And as for me, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.